Our countdown continues. Just in time for election season, myth number six, Republicans shrink government. Big government is not the answer. Republicans but do they'll say that. they'll limit spending. My administration will spend what is truly needed and not a dollar more. Republicans have always said that. Our government is too, too big, big and, and it spends, spends too much. much. But for over 75 years, no Republican administration has cut the size of government. Since George W. Bush became president, government spending's up nearly 25 percent. And it's not just because of terrorism. The Office of Management and Budget says spending at the EPA is up 12 percent, agriculture 14 percent, interior 30 percent, labor 64 percent, the Department of Education 70 percent. And the pork keeps pouring out. Even the peanut festival in Dothan, Alabama got $200,000. And this was great, isn't it? A celebration of the peanut. The money will be used for a big arena to replace this tent. It'll house activities for seniors, they say. And there'll be room for a greased pig wrestling contest. <laughs> Republican Congressman Terry Everett, here he is in the peanut parade, got them the money. He wouldn't talk to us about it, but the locals said they like getting your money. We deserve this money because we are an agricultural area. But I think this man's answer is more accurate. I think it's a waste of money, but if they're going to waste money, I guess it's better to waste it here than anywhere else. How y'all doing? We're doing good. How about you? Right. We fought a war against big government, and you know what? Big government won. Economist Stephen Moore is a Republican. It was Newt Gingrich 10 years ago who said we're going to make government smaller and smarter. We're tired of big government, wasteful spending. And you Don't look at what's honest. happened to the government in the 10 years since the Republicans took control of Congress. The government is twice as big. You Republicans are supposed to stand for smaller government. Lisa Murkowski is one of Alaska's senators. We want a smaller government, but boy, I sure want more highways and more stuff. Whatever the stuff is. I'll say. And she voted for money for the Iditarod Trail, a local Y, and more than half a dozen Alaskan museums. This is 67 pages of, I'd call it pork, going to Alaska. And you. Oh, you need to come up. You would realize it's not pork, it's all necessity. Alaska gets more per person than any other state. That's big government getting bloated. Oink. Because Alaska has so little. People look at, at, at Alaska and say, well, geez, they're getting all this money. But we still have communities that are not tied in to sewer and water. There are certain basic things that you've got to have. Museums? Pay for your own museums. Well, I'd like to be able to make a case that our museum is different. Um, But I can't. We're on to item number five, and we've all heard this one during the presidential campaign. When it comes to income taxes, the rich don't pay their fair share. A lot of you may buy that. And now I have a special message for the special interests. The Democratic presidential candidates keep saying that. We want our country back for ordinary Americans. The first one willing to say it to me was the Reverend Al Sharpton. Well, the rich do not pay their share. That's a widespread belief. But do the politicians even know how much of the income tax burden the rich pay now? The top 1% in this country pays very much less than 10%, very much less than 5%. So what's fair? The top 1% should pay 10% of America's income taxes, 20%? No, they should pay somewhere around 15%. They don't pay 5%. Anybody could see that as unequal and unfair. So they should pay 15%, he says. And the richest 1% now pay less than 10%. Then he said less than 5%. But that's so silly because, and I bet most of you don't know this, the IRS says the richest 1% of taxpayers already pay 34%, twice what Sharpton wanted them to pay. The Reverend well, barely reacted when I told him. They're already paying 34%. No, I think that if you deal with the quality of their lives, he quickly the changed the subject. The he never would admit really how far off he was. Now, you may still feel the rich should pay more. After all, they have so much. 
But let's remember the facts. The top 1% of Americans, that's those who earn about $300,000 a year, pay 34%, more than a third of all income taxes. And the top 5%, those making over $125,000, pay more than half. So remember that next time you hear a candidate saying he'll sock it to the rich. In a moment, myth number four. This one turns out to be deadly. 